Today guys we're going to have a lesson on the structure of the atom and I'm going to build that into uh, <clears throat> further into isotopes and working out the relative atomic mass of isotopes from that. Okay, so a little bit about the history of the atom first of all. So the atom as we know it nowadays is uh, an atom uh, similar to uh, what I have on the screen now, which has basically got our nucleus with our shells of electrons orbiting around it. If that's uh, maybe a little bit of confusing for some of you, it's probably a bit simpler to look at it this way with our nucleus in the middle and our shells of electrons around the outside. And you should know that from Key Stage 3. The historical development of the atom, um, where we pick up the story really, is back in about 1897 with a, a guy called J.J. Thompson. Now, Thompson essentially put forward what he called the plum pudding model. And if you can imagine a plum pudding where you have all these little, in this instance it was positive and negative charges, just randomly mixed throughout the entire uh, atom. Okay, so you can see here the difference between this and the modern day atom very simply is that there is no nucleus. Positive and negative charges are intermixed together. You can also see that there's no neutron here. The neutron wasn't discovered until later on. And these negative charges were not really uh, investigated fully until a little bit later on as well. So that was the plum pudding model put forward in about 1897, r roughly 1900, by J.J. Thompson. Now, that was further developed then through uh, a series of experiments and investigations by uh, a guy, Rutherford. Okay, now, Mr. Rutherford decided or put together the, uh, the idea that we would then have this type of a structure. And basically what he discovered was that there were electrons in shells. So we moved on from that plum pudding random mixture of a model to having electrons in shells. We had our nucleus and we had our shells around that. And Rutherford put forward that particular uh, model in about 1913. So Ernest Rutherford was is the next person that we need to be uh, familiar with in terms of the history of the development of the, uh, of the atom. Okay, now he did a lot more than that, but I'm not going to go into that. That is it's in, the, uh, in your notes, so you can um, familiarize yourself from that. Okay, now, <clears throat> the neutron then was discovered and put forward by uh, Chadwick, okay, James Chadwick, in about 1932. Okay, so essentially this all led to the development of the modern structure of the atom, which you should know from key stage 3, where we have our nucleus, and our nucleus here contains neutrons, and it also contains protons, and around that we have these orbits or shells, three-dimensional orbiting structures which contain the electrons. Please try not to think of them as these sort of two-dimensional ring structures. Okay, they are, they are, the atom is a three-dimensional structure. Okay, so that is our general idea of it, and we've got our nucleus obviously containing the protons and the neutrons. Okay, so building on from that then we need to be able to look at the structure of an atom and the information given to us in the periodic table and to work out from that where, how many protons, how many neutrons and how many electrons are actually in it. So if we just get rid of that Okay, so first thing we need to have a look at is a, a little bit more about the structure of this atom and uh, the electrical charges and the masses of those particular uh, subatomic particles that we have just looked at. So this is a little table that's in your notes and make sure that you know it and you know it well. It comes up fairly regularly. It's really very, very easy marks in an exam. Okay, so I'm just going to use shorthand for proton as P plus, neutron as NO, N0, and electron as E minus. Now the mass of these things, a proton has a mass of 1, a relative mass we're talking here, we're not talking grams, that 1 and 1, and 
the electron is extremely light. So it's about 2,000 electrons to equivalent mass of one neutron or one proton. The charge on a proton is plus one. Okay, the charge on a neutron is zero. It has no charge. And the electron is negative one. Where are they found? Well, these are found in the nucleus. These are found in the nucleus. And these are found in the shells orbiting the nucleus. Okay, so this might shine a bit of light on the structure of the atom to, for a lot of you. So if we look again back at this diagram here, hopefully you'll now see that the nucleus overall must be positively charged because it obviously contains the protons, and we've just established protons are positive. It also contains neutrons, but they have no charge. Electrons then circle or orbit this nucleus and those electrons very simply are negative so we have a positive to negative charge in here and that keeps the electrons attracted to the nucleus and stops them sort of leaving the nucleus and going away unless of course something else comes into play which is strong enough to pull the electron away and then it will leave the nucleus okay but that's getting into bonding and why one thing reacts with another okay now you might say, well, why does, the, why does the electron that we have here, why does it not simply go and nestle right beside the nucleus and sit on top of it, if you like? Well, the simple answer to that is because as these electrons get closer to each other, they start repelling each other. So they are attracted to the positive nucleus, certainly. There's no doubt about that. But as they come closer to the nucleus, they start feeling the influence of the repulsions on each other so they don't get too close to the nucleus otherwise matter would just implode on itself okay so that's the reason for that now if we have a look so that's a table there guys that you need to ensure that you are very very familiar with we can see therefore that pretty much all the mass of an, of an atom is contained within the nucleus okay so if we look at that later on, when we look at mass numbers, you will see that the mass number on a periodic table on an element is tells us the number of protons and neutrons. And that's no surprise because the mass really is the protons and neutrons. The electrons are insignificant, really, in terms of the mass. So they're not in the mass number. Okay. <clears throat> now, we need to be able to work out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons there are in something. So... To that effect, we have two numbers always attached to any particular atom. So we'll take, and this is done later on in a video as well, we'll take lithium at 7 and 3. So 7, the top number, is what we call our mass number. Okay, and the 3, the bottom number, the smaller number, is called our atomic number. Now it's really important that you know what these numbers can act do actually tell you so that you can apply it in an examination situation. So the bottom number is the number of protons. It's sometimes called the number of, or the proton number. It tells me how many protons. Now that is often equal to the electron number, the number of electrons. Okay, but it's only if it's uncharged. Okay, so once something becomes charged, and we'll deal with that later on, the numbers of protons and electrons no longer are equal. But this number always tells me number of protons, no matter what the charge is. If it's three with a plus charge on it, there's still three protons. The electrons are different. If it's uncharged, this number tells me protons, which is equal to electrons. Okay, the top number here is mass number, and that is the number of protons. This time it's plus the number of neutrons. Okay, plus, not equal to, plus. So in other words, in this instance we have three protons. We have, there's no charge on it, okay. So we also have three electrons. The top number is number of protons plus neutrons. Well, I know I have three protons, so three plus four. So in this atom I have four neutrons. Okay, so I'll do another couple of these guys and then you can have a go with a few. Just, if you think you've got it, it's not that difficult, I don't think. If you think you've got it, just please have a, a pause the video and do them yourself. Okay, so make sure please that you have a periodic table at your disposal. Okay. 
Right, so we'll do boron. Boron is 11 and 5. Remember, this number is the atomic number and tells me number of protons, which is equal to number of electrons if it is on charged. Okay, and the top number is protons plus neutrons. Okay, so in other words, protons, electrons, neutrons. I have five protons, I have five electrons, I have six neutrons. Very easy. Okay, let's change the atom. Let's change it to magnesium. Okay. Protons are 12, electrons are 12, and neutrons are 24 minus 12, which is obviously 12. Okay. Let's do another one. So we will do phosphorus this time. 31, 15, 15. So protons are 15, electrons are 15, neutrons are 31 minus 15, which is 16. Okay, hopefully you're getting these now. I'll, all right, so we will do this time a uh, this is 10, so protons are 50, electrons are 50, there's no charge on it, and neutrons then are 119 minus 50, which gives me 69. Okay, right, I'm going to leave that there, guys. I mean, there's lots of these in your notes. There's, you can go onto the internet and you can find lots and lots of examples. Okay, so... Let's look this time at the overall charge on an atom. Now, if we think of all of those ones that we've looked at so far, the number of protons and the number of electrons have been exactly the same. Okay, so if we look at oxygen, there's no charge on it, so protons and electrons are the same. Now, therefore, if protons and electrons are the same, these things, these atoms to begin with, must be electrically neutral. Okay? There can be no charge because if you have eight positives and you have eight negatives, okay, so if you have eight, sorry, if you have eight positives, so positive eight, and you have eight negatives, well, that's going to give you a charge of neutral, a charge of zero. Now, we cannot worry, we don't need to worry about the neutrons. You might say, well, why is he not worried on the neutrons? Well, you should know from earlier that neutrons have no charge. So all atoms are essentially electrically neutral. And they do become charged, but they've got to start losing and gaining electrons in order for that to actually happen. Okay? Right. Now, that is exactly what can happen. Sometimes atoms can become charged. And if they become charged, okay, a charged atom is an ion. And we'll deal with that later on when we get into ionic bonding. And they become ions by losing or gaining electrons. Okay, so there's loss or gain of electrons. Alright? Now, so if anything has a charge on it, it is because it has lost or it has gained electrons. Not protons and obviously not neutrons because there is no charge on those. Okay, so let's have a look at something like um, oxygen this time again. So, okay, so that's oxygen. We'll say it's two negative charge on it. Right, so oxygen, remember our proton number tells us number of protons. So protons in here is 8. Neutrons in here is that minus that is 8. Okay, our electrons this time, now it has got a 2 negative charge. It can only get this by gaining or losing electrons. So therefore it has the, we go back to our table from earlier, electrons are negatively charged. So it must have originally started off, if we ignore the charge, with eight protons and eight electrons. It's now two negative, so it must have gained two electrons. So the electrons number in this must be ten. 
Okay. <clears throat> let's take another one. Let's take fluorine minus 19. Okay. Now you'll notice that I haven't put the atomic number on. They may well do that and ask you, because if it's fluorine, its atomic number has to be what it is in the periodic table. So you may go to the periodic table and have to find it yourself without being given the information here. Well, we go to the periodic table, fluorine is 9. Okay, so protons are 9. Neutrons are 19 minus 9, which is obviously 10. Electrons would normally be 9, but there's a negative charge, so it must have gained another electron. So it must be 10. Okay, let's do a couple of positive ions. So if we take sodium, 23, and we'll take it plus 1. Okay, well let's have a look then at sodium. Go to the periodic table, find its atomic number, it's 11. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so protons are 11. Neutrons are 23 minus 11. And electrons, it's plus one, which means it must have one more positive charge than negative. So it started off with 11 pluses and 11 negatives. It's got one more positive than negative, so it must have lost an electron to bring that down to 10. Okay, let's have a look at beryllium. Three plus ion. Protons are 4. Neutrons are 9 minus 4. Electrons, well, let's look at what have started off with 4 protons and 4 electrons to begin with. It now has a 3 plus charge, so it must have 3 more positives than negatives. So therefore, it must only have 1 electron. Last couple. This time we will take um, a calcium ion. So protons are 20, neutrons are 40 minus 20, and electrons, well let's do what it had first, it had that number of protons and that number of electrons to begin with, okay, it's now got two more positives than negatives, so therefore, it must have only got 18 electrons, it has lost two electrons during a chemical reaction, okay. All right, so last couple guys, we'll do a couple of negative ones then. Um, so if we have sulfur, no, in fact we take um, nitrogen, three negative nitrogen, 14 and seven. So protons have to be seven, neutrons have to be 14 minus seven. And we have now got our electrons here. Okay, and our electrons must be, we must have started off with 7p plus, and we must have started off with 7e minus. It's three negatives, so it must have gained three negative charges because it started off with neutral. So that, therefore, must be 10 electrons in our nitrogen. Okay, and last one. So we will do... We will do carbon, we'll do a four negative carbon, so protons must be six, ne neutrons must be 12 minus six. We started off obviously at the beginning with six P plus six electrons, it's now got a four minus charge, so it must have four more negatives than positives, so this also has got ten electrons. Okay, so that's how you do and work out the number of protons, neutrons and electrons and it's then how you deal with charges, whether they be positive or negative charges on the atom. Or ion, I should say. Okay, right. So, this time what we're going to do is have a look at uh, some data that the examiner may give you and from that data you would be expected then to perhaps identify what the element or the atom actually is. Okay, so 
we will give a in fact we'll do we're gonna we'll actually look at electron arrangement first of all before we go into that. Okay, so electron arrangement. So how are these electrons arranged? We talked earlier about them being arranged in shells. So let's have a look and see how that looks. So our electrons are indeed arranged in shells. Okay, so they are arranged in one, two, three, four shells. They fill from the first shell out, okay, around the nucleus, and that holds two electrons. All the other shells, as far as we're concerned at GCSE, hold eight electrons. So that's very important. Now we can write the electron arrangement if we take, for example, um, something like uh, we will go for lithium. So lithium is seven, three, Li. So the electron arrangement of that, we have three electrons to deal with. We can put two in the first shell. So we draw two little X's in there. And we put one then in the second shell. And we can also write it 2, 1. Okay. If we take something else which has got three shells, so we take sulfur. Okay, which is 32, 16. So it has an elect 16 electrons. We can fit two in the first shell. We we'll always fill from the first shell. Eight in the next one. Well, that brings us up to 10. And we've still got six left over. So we would 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8 there, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there. So the examiner may ask you to represent that in two ways, either just shorthand like so, or in a dot cross diagram like that. Okay, we, they can ask you to go further on, maybe they may take you into the fourth shell of calcium, for example. So we have 20 electrons to deal with, 2 in the first shell. 8, that just brings us up to 10, we have another 10 to do. We can only fit 8 into the next one out of that remaining 10. And we must have 2 in the final shell for calcium. So we would have 2 dots, 8 dots, or 2 crosses, 8 crosses, 8 crosses, and 2 crosses in the outer shell. And that's how we do simple electron arrangements. Now we'll have a little look at some electron arrangements, guys, of atoms and ions which have gained or lost electrons. Okay, so let's say the examiner said to you, write the electron arrangement for the following. So we'll take sol uh, calcium, okay, and calcium, and we make it a plus one ion. Now, to work out the electron arrangement, we need to work out how many electrons there are. Well, there were originally 20 electrons in this, but there's a plus one charge. That means the electron number in this has gone down by one, because... Uh, it's plus one, and we must have one more positive than negative. So we have 19. The electron arrangement, I just call it EA for short, must be two in the first shell, eight, that brings us up to 10. We have another nine to do. We can only fit eight in the next shell, and we must have one in the outer shell here. Okay? So it's really important that you pay attention to this, guys. Loads of people for this get the answer wrong because they just go to here, see 20, and write 288. Two, and then they lose a very, very simple mark. Okay, let's take fluorine. We'll make fluorine two negative. Well, we go to our periodic table and we find the atomic number of fluorine is nine. So originally it must have had nine electrons. Okay, its electron arrangement then must be two in the first shell. Now it has gained a two negative charge, so it must have now have 11 electrons. We get eight in the second shell, that's 10 accounted for, but we have 11, so it's 2, 8, 1. Okay, we take sulfur, 3 negative, we go to the periodic table, we find sulfur's atomic number is 16, so it must originally have had 16 electrons, it has a 3 negative and 6, 16 protons, it's got a 3 negative charge, so it must have 3 more negatives than positives, so it must have 19 electrons. So we have 19 electrons. We have two in the first shell. Then we have eight. That brings us up to 10 over 19. We can only fit eight into the next shell. That brings us up to 18 over 19. And we must have one in the final shell. <clears throat> okay, let's do with an aluminium. Three positive aluminium ion. Go to a periodic table. 13 is the atomic number. So it must have originally have had 13 
positive protons and 13 negative electrons. It's now 3 plus, so it must have 3 more protons and electrons, but remember it can't gain 3 of these, it has to lose 3 of these, so it must have lost 3 to bring us to 10 negatives. 13 positives equals 3 plus charge. So we've 10 of those, and we have 2 in the first shell and 8 in the next shell, and that's our 10 electrons, therefore accounted for. Okay, so we'll do another couple, and hopefully by now, guys, you know you've got this and you've been stopping the video and doing these. Okay. So potassium 2 plus and 1 plus we'll do. So periodic table again, 19, obviously 19. It must have started off with 19 pluses and 19 negatives. Okay, it's got a plus 1 charge, so it's got one more proton than electrons, so it must have 18 electrons, so it's 18, 2 in the first shell, 8 in the next shell, that gives us 10, we've 8 more to account for, okay, and that's 288. Here we have, must have started off with 19 positives and negatives, um, that means we have 2 more positives than negatives, so therefore we must have lost 2 electrons, bringing us down to 17, so we go 17 for that, 2, 8, that brings us to 10, 7 more brings us up to 17. Okay guys, well hopefully now you have a good understanding of how to deal with charges when you're working out electron arrangements and how to just, as well, generally just work out electron arrangements. Okay, now, let's have a look at a couple of past paper questions then. Okay, so if I just Zoom in on this so you can hopefully see it okay. Right, so essentially we've been given some data, some information here. I'll just make the charges clear. This is a minus one charge, this is a plus two charge, this is a minus two charge, and this is a three plus charge. Okay, and those are our electron arrangements. Right, so we use this in conjunction with the periodic table to work out what A, B, C, and D actually are. So a is 2, 8, so it has 10 electrons in it. Now, it has a negative charge, so it must have gained an extra electron along the way, which means originally in its form in the periodic table, it must have had 9 electrons. So it must also have had 9 protons. So if we go to the periodic table, find one with 9 protons, that is fluorine. A is fluorine. Okay, if you think you've got this, guys, again, please pause the video and go and do them. Come back and check. This one is two, two positive and it's got 10 electrons. That means it must have originally, uh, it must have lost two electrons, so it must have originally had not 10 electrons, but 12 electrons, in other words, 12 protons. That means it must be magnesium, because magnesium, if I can get it there, you can see has 12 protons. So, B is magnesium. C is two negative. It originally had ten it has ten electrons now. It's gained two electrons obviously because it's got it's uh, now two negative with ten. So it must have originally only had eight electrons, which means it must have originally had eight protons. That makes it oxygen. Okay. D then is two eight with a three plus charge. That means it has lost three electrons. It has ten electrons here, so it must have originally had thirteen electrons, which means it originally had thirteen protons. Makes it aluminium. Okay, so that's a little past paper question, uh, which is just really applying all the stuff that I've done previously in this video. Okay guys, so we're going to tie all of that stuff together on electron arrangement and atomic structure into th a few questions which will test your understanding of this little topic. So the first question is really very simple. We've already done one question, but this question here is very, very simple indeed. So make sure you have your periodic table with you. So let's go through it. What we've got to do is just to work out the numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons in each of A, B, C, and D, and maybe assign atomic and mass number if those gaps are empty. So, first one's very, very simple. We have number of protons. Well, number of protons is equal to atomic number, so that must be 18. Number of neutrons is mass number minus 
Atomic number is 22. Number of electrons, well, there's no charge on it, so protons and electrons are the same, and the electron configuration then should add up to 18, 288. It is 18. Let's look at B then. Well, we don't have an atomic number B. We know that the number of protons is the atomic number, so the atomic number must be 13. We know the number of neutrons is t mass minus atomic, so it must be 14. We know the number of electrons. Well, there's no charge on it again. We just check. So protons and electrons are the same. Uh, oh, sorry, look. Okay, there is a charge on it. It hasn't given it here, but the information is in fact here. The electron configuration is actually 2,8, which means that it has lost some electrons, and therefore it is indeed only 10 electrons. Okay? So sometimes they give you the charge here, sometimes they do it via the electron configuration here. Okay? Right, let's have a look then at the next one. So, number of protons is 20, so the atomic number must be 20. The mass number is protons plus neutrons, so therefore that must be 40, 20 plus 20. The electron configuration will leave 20 to deal with, 20 electrons, so it's 2, 8, 8, 2. Final one then, okay, so um, atomic number is 7, so proton number must be 7. Neutron number is 14 minus 7, which is obviously 7. And the electrons, we'll look at this, this has got 10 electrons, not 7, so we need to be careful. So that is an electron on the of 2, 8. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward, I think. Hopefully you're all able to, to get that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this one now we do have charged part the charge is given to us via the the information here. So we have A, B and C plus one minus two, no charge. Okay, so again please be get, make sure you're pausing the video and having a go at these and then coming back and checking them guys. So the atomic number is six. The mass number, well let's see, we've six neutrons over here it tells us. So the atomic number is six, so we must have six protons. Protons plus neutrons is mass number. That's 12. Number of electrons, there's no charge on it, so protons and electrons are the same. Atomic number here then, okay, so if we just look at atomic number, is number of protons always, doesn't matter about the charge, so therefore atomic number must be 19, 19 sorry. Protons is like so, um, we're looking for the number of electrons, well, sorry, number of neutrons. Well, number of neutrons is always mass minus atomic, so it's 20. And finally, then, we have the number of electrons here. Well, number of electrons is always equal, protons and electrons are equal, but this is charged, so it must have lost, plus one charge, it must have lost an electron. There are 19 protons, so therefore the electrons are 18. Let's look at the final one. There's two negative charges we need to bear in mind. Mass number is 16 and the number of electrons is 10. Well, if the number of electrons is 10 and it's two negative, that means it's gained two electrons from its original state, which means it must have originally had eight electrons, which means it must have originally had eight protons. So that number there must be eight, which means the atomic number must also be eight. The number of neutrons is mass minus atomic, so that so the last one there was a little bit trickier than the others, but it still should not have been beyond you. Okay, the last question here then, if we just zoom out on this a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so we have a variety of data really combining the two tables that we had um, previously, guys. So we have a symbol, we have a charge given to us here, protons, electrons, neutrons, and the electron configuration. So the first one is um, pretty simple, I think. Okay, just move this. Okay, so if we look at the first one, we have no charge and simply nitrogen. So we go to the periodic table and find the number of protons in nitrogen, or the atomic number, well, it's seven. Therefore, there's no charge, so protons and electrons are the same, and the electron configuration must be simply 2,5. Calcium now is a 2 plus charge, so let's just be cautious of that. We go to the periodic table and find calcium. Its atomic number is obviously is 20. Okay, you can see it 
just at the bottom left hand corner there. So therefore, the number of protons is 20. Okay, now the number of electrons, if the protons are 20, it has got 20 pluses, but it's got a 2 plus, so it started off with 20 electrons originally, but it has a 2 plus charge, so it must have 2 more pluses than negatives, so that value there of electrons must be from 20 down to 18. So the electrons in here then must be because of the 2 plus 18, so 2 in the first shell, that makes us up to 10, and another 8 makes us up to 18. Let's look at potassium. Okay, we haven't been given a charge, but we need to look at protons and electrons here. Well, we notice immediately there's one more proton than electrons, so there's one more plus charge than negatives, so it's plus 1 in total. There's 18 electrons, so that gives us 2, and 8 is 10. 8 left over is 18. Chloride, the ions then, we've got a negative 1 charge here. We start off with 17 protons, so there must be one more negative electron than protons. And again, our electron arrangement is again 288. Okay, so in the last one here, we've very sketchy information. Only two little numbers here we've got to use. And we've got to identify the symbol as well. well remember, the symbol is always given by the number of protons. So we just find, go to the periodic table and find 10, which is neon. And if we find 11 which is sodium. So we use the 10, so neon, and the 11 must be sodium. So that's pretty easy. Okay, that always tells us, the proton number always tells us the identity of the atom. Right, we have here 10 protons and 12 electrons. So we have two more negatives and positive. So this substance here must be minus 2. The neutrons, therefore, if we go to neon and we look at neon in the periodic table, its mass number is 20. So 20 minus 10 gives me 10 neutrons, and its electron arrangement must be, we have got 12 to account for, so it must be 282. Sodium then, we have got 8 electrons and 11 protons. We have 3 more positives than we have negatives, so therefore that must be plus 3. My number of neutrons, how do I work that out? Well, sodium I know has got, we have, a, where are we? we've got a mass number of 23. So therefore, we have a mass number of 23. We must have 11 here, so we must have 12. Okay, 12 and 11 being 23. And we have 2, 8 for our electron arrangement. Okay, guys, that's electron arrangement and atomic structure and of atoms and ions done. We'll look in the next video at isotopes and how they are different from atoms. Um, hopefully you're able to do those problems and those questions. If not, please go back through the video and please do the questions again, pausing the video and checking your understanding.